I'm Sarah Heath, and as uh, they shared, I am indeed a site teaching and preaching pastor. Let's get the first question out of the way. Yes, I'm old enough. In fact, I've been doing this for a while. So let me tell you a story that I'm sure a lot of you can relate to. I was on a flight, and on this flight, I noticed that there were all these soldiers. And as they sat down, uh, the usual thing happened. It was late at night. One of them sat beside me, and the question comes, so what do you do? Now, sometimes, uh, depending on where I am, I think through, uh, how do I want to answer this? Do I want to be honest? Do I want to say, well, um, you know, I work with people? That's a good one, by the way. I work with people, and, um, or I'm an insurance agent. Nobody talks to you after you say, <laughs> I'm an insurance agent. So I said, uh, actually, I work at a church. He stood up, and he said, guys, don't worry. There's a nun on the plane. <laughs> What about me, says none. <laughs> I kept thinking, like, what am I? So now when I get on a plane, I make sure I'm dressed fancy just in case. So that's people outside of the church. But what about my own colleagues? Well, there is this uh, parking spot, and it is right in front of a hospital that I visit quite often, the clergy-only parking spot. So it was uh, one day I had a, a parishioner who was in there, you see, who was having sort of uh, these heart problems, and they weren't sure if they're going to have to do surgery or not. So I pulled my Mini Cooper right into, I know, when you're small, you drive a small car. I pulled right into the clergy-only parking, and I'm getting all my stuff together, and this sweet man walks towards me, and he says, sorry, sweetheart, this is for pastors. And I turned, and I said, hi, I'm Reverend Sarah Heath. <laughs> and in that moment, he said, really? And I said, really? <laughs> But it isn't just other people. The truth is, I love not being known as a pastor. As a creative person, sometimes that is my identity. I like to say, well, I'm not that. I'm not that type of pastor. Have you ever done that? Or I don't, I'm not that kind of Christian, right? Like, if people find out you're a Christian or a leader in your church, and you say, well, I'm not that kind. And so we spend a lot of time focusing on what we are not. I was in a conference, and I, I stood up, and I said, here's the deal. I'm all these things. I'm an actress. I'm a, a writer. I'm, I'm someone who creates art, and, I, and I'm a pastor, and blah, blah, blah. But I'm not good at administration, and I don't love um, finance meetings, and um, all these. And I go on and on and on, and, and the person leading it who's become a mentor of mine said, stop. Sarah, who you are is interesting. Who you are not is not interesting. Friends, we come from a denomination that I am passionate about and that I love, but for so long and too much, we focus on what we are not. So if we are going through, um, and I can say this because I finished my ordination boards, but when we're, <laughs> yeah, on the other side, um, we have a lot of people who um, don't know that they can be themselves in ministry. Talk about an example of this. When I was commissioned, which simply means for those of you who aren't UMCers, it's kind of our pre-ordination. It's kind of our test pilot. Um, it's our first date. I don't know what you want to call it. Um, <laughs> testing us out. And so I was uh, getting commissioned, which has a lot of pomp and circumstance. We wear our white robes. By the way, uh, walking down an aisle in a white dress that way was not what I thought was going to come first. <laughs> but here I am in that. The night before that, I had been in a film that made it into the LA Film Fest. So my parents fly in town to see me commissioned, and I'm like, oh, by the way, uh, there's a little thing I got to do on a red carpet. Can you come? For so long, I lived those two lives, artist over here, and then the next morning, putting on the robe and that over here. Friends, I'm here to tell you that your job is to be you. Who you are is interesting. The things about you, whether clergy or not, have been put into your life because God wants to use them. That creative nudge that you feel inside of you as I speak right now, that freedom that you're starting to feel is important because who you are is who God wants you to be. Your job is to be you. See, the problem comes when I try to be a pastor. 
I can't be a pastor. I can't play the role of a pastor, but I can be me as a pastor. My faith and who I am can only be expressed by who I am. See, my job is to be me. Now, I recently read an article, it was from the United Kingdom, that said there are top five things that people regret on their deathbed. Do you know what number one was? Number one was not being true to who they really are. Number one was listening to what other people wanted them to be. There was once a rabbi. And this rabbi had had this vision where he had died, and when he awoke, God was there, and he said, God, I am so sorry that I wasn't David or Moses. And God says, stop, stop, stop. What I'm sorry about is that you weren't more you. Put into more uh, recent terms. I found this on the internet, which we all know everything that's on the internet is true. Um, When you get to heaven, God is not going to ask you why you weren't like Mother Teresa, Billy Graham, or Bono. He's likely to ask you, he or she, is likely to ask you why you weren't more like you. Your responsibility and source of real freedom and success is to discover who you are. Lead with your own unique talents and personality. Be authentically you and let God use you. It's difficult in a system where it feels like you can't always be you, but listen to that inner God voice that says, I put these things into you for a reason. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God so that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the wonderful light. Friends, whether you consider yourself a pastor or not, we are all pastors. We all have people who are looking to us when we are publicly known as Christians. And so you need to be able to be you, but be you as a believer. Guess what? You can only be you. As Oscar Wilde says, everyone else is taken. (laughs) There's not an opportunity for us to be anyone else. Now let me tell you about a temptation that I know all of us have. You ever gone to a conference of any kind and you hear someone speak and you think, ooh, I should be that pastor? Maybe, or I should be that leader, or I should be that person, or maybe, oh, associate pastors, let me see a head shake. Your lead pastor goes to a conference and hears what they're doing there and decides that that's going to work here. So they come back and you're like, but we're not Rick Warren, dude. I mean, there is this... (laughs) You don't look good in Hawaiian shirts. Um, There is this sense where we often think who I am is not good enough, and so I need to be something else. That's not what this talk is about. People get it wrong all the time. I'll never forget, yeah, I have this worship service that we built. It was really unique. They asked me to talk about it at our annual conference. I talked about it, and the first thing I said is, you need to contextualize you know, what you're doing. And so as I said this to this woman, and I went through the whole talk, and then I had those, one of those moments where you're like, do you listen to anything? I said, this woman comes up to me and says, you know, a service at 11 o'clock isn't going to work for us because we have so many surfers. No, I, I don't want you, what? I don't want you to take my service my exact same time and do it. No, see, who you are is interesting. Who you are not is not interesting. Your job is to be you, and guess what? You can only be you. Isn't that good news? Isn't that freeing? That's me. That's me with a super awesome bull pit. (laughs) When I was little, I wasn't afraid to be me, right? Everyone, if they're being raised in a healthy environment, thinks they are the greatest Thing ever, and they're capable of anything. I recently heard an expert on um, education talking about how we kill that out of kids. Kids stop being able to believe that they can do anything. He said there was this little girl who was frantically coloring in the corner, and the teacher walked over and said, what are you drawing? And the little girl said, well, I'm drawing God. And the teacher said, I'm sorry, sweetie, no one knows what God looks like. She said, don't worry, they will in a minute. (laughs) 
You have to give up your fear of being wrong. Every artist learns that. If I were afraid to create and paint because what if what I do isn't the best thing out there, wouldn't the woods be silent if only the birds that were the best sang? Right? God is giving you unique gifts and talents. They're not the same as mine, but they are beautiful and valuable, and the world needs it. So remember that little you at five that thought you could do anything. So the question becomes, who am I? If I want you to be authentically you, then the question is, who am I? And by that I mean, who are you? Who are you? What are the things that make you come alive? For me, when I am uh, in music environments or when I am painting or creating, that is for me when I am most with the creator and I am most myself. That is Sarah in the raw. So who are you? What makes you come alive? If it's finance, bless you. <laughs> if, it's, if it's whatever it is, if you're great at organizing, awesome. That's a ministry. Whatever it is, the authentic you is who the world needs you to be. There are people that you can reach that I cannot. The gospel needs to be something out of an authentic self because let me tell you, the world knows when you're lying. You have to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and all your strength, and all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But you first have to know what your heart is and what your soul is, and then you got to go and use it. Friends, in this room, whether you are clergy or not, you are a pastor to a world that needs to hear your unique story, your unique story creation because who you are is interesting we have to stop apologizing for who we are not leaders in the church that are in the room right now it's okay to ask us to go to conferences to kind of work on our growing edges but what if we focus on using people's gifts to grow the church what if we put people in places where their strengths and abilities would grow bigger and bigger instead of focusing on the places that they are not good. Who you are is interesting. Your job is to be you. You cannot be anyone else but you. And you are a pastor.